Hey there guys, Halo Bosom 324 and welcome back to Let's Play Katoba Shoujo. In the last part, we talked to Mishi and Shizune, we built some signs, and we talked to Kenji, who, as usual, is being a crazy bastard. And then we went to the festival, where we were trying to win a stuffed doll for Misha, after winning one for, technically, for Shizune. So, let's get back to into it. I throw again, but my aim is way off this time. My arm feels kind of heavy as well, as if blood isn't flowing to it properly. I scold myself mentally, thinking that's pathetic I could get tired from something like that. Then I realize maybe it's because of my heart. If it is, then I don't know what to think. It's depressing that even something as small as this is enough to make me realize my own mortality. Let me try and speak clearly for once. I guess there won't ever be a time when I'll be able to forget about it. Even today, when I thought I'd be able to just enjoy myself on this beautiful night and in this beautiful place, I can't escape the reason why I'm here. I never felt so at peace in my life, in this place which is nowhere else, I, which is like nowhere else I've ever been. It's hard now to keep from thinking the unthinkable. That I may have just been sent here to die. These past few days have been some of the best of my life. Oh god, this music is amazing. The first time in a long time that I ever felt truly alive. But in the end, I'm someone who finds himself reminded every time he climbs too many stairs or throws a ball too hard that he could die at any second. I'll always be limited by this. I feel depressed by that and anger as well. In the end, I care about my life and I enjoy it and it's more transient than ever before. I wonder what it will, f what will finally do me in. It could be anything. If I'm this weak and pathetic, a bad fall, a punch in the chest, a straight baseball. I've now lost my will to keep playing this game, but I keep playing anyway. Suddenly, I feel a split-second sensation of pain in my chest. It comes and goes instantaneously, but it's enough to make me stumble just a bit. Shizune jumps back startled. She comes closer, staring at me with concern. Misha puts her hand on my shoulder. Hey, Hechan, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't feel too good right now. I think I'm sick. I don't think I can go on. Misha frowns. Don't strain yourself. If you're not sick, you just make yourself sicker. Look, the festival is just getting started. We've been playing games for a while. We can take a little break if you're tired. Good idea, Shi-chan. I'm feeling a little tired, too. I think we're all a little worn out running all this school, Shi-chan. I nod. They don't seem to notice anything unusual. That's good. We walk through the sea of people, with Misha carefully pointing out the faces of everyone she knows. Shizune holds the st stuffed cat in her arms, cradling it absentmindedly. It seems like they're having fun. Suddenly, I feel a pang of guilt. Because of my poor health, we all had to stop. Hey Chan, we're both feeling kinda hungry. How about you? I'm not as hungry as I could be, but I do want something to eat. That's good enough, Hee Chan. What do you want to get? It doesn't really matter to me. Ah, how about sandwiches then? And we'll need something to drink too. He shall get everything. What? Jasuna looks at me and smiles, and I realize she might be trying to cheer me up with a joke. I laugh. Hee-chan, it's getting kind of crowded, so we might not be able to eat here. It's getting kind of loud, too. Maybe we should go eat up on the roof. That's fine with me. Might be a nice view, and it could be a little breeze. Okay, then. I, I guess I should get the food and drinks now, so I'll see you two then. Misha gives a clumsy wave, then runs off. Before, I didn't notice that the paper lantern was looking illuminating the dark night. But now that I'm able to see it, it's a really amazing sight. Fireflies float overhead, their soft glow making it look as if it's snowing lights in the night sky. This type of thing would be impossible to see in the city. Shizune tugs at my sleeve impatiently and crosses her arms, frowning as if to show displeasure at me for getting distracted. You know I don't know how to read sign language. Come to think of it, isn't that kind of stupid for me to have said that to a deaf person? She wouldn't have heard it. I sure I'll open the show that I don't understand. Shizune shakes her head and dismisses it with a wave of her hand. Maybe I should get around to asking Misha for some lessons on sign language. Climbing up onto the roof, I find myself in awe again at the sheer size of the school. The grounds are so expansive, I can't believe I hadn't realized it before. As I walk across the roof, trailing behind Shizune, I can't but help be taken in by the stars shining in the sky. Shizune and I sit down on the bench. She seems like she's in a good mood, as she smiles softly while the breeze blows through her hair. We look down at the festival, which looks like a sea of glowing amber lanterns and waving paper fans teeming with people. Some of them festively dressed in yukata. In fact, most of the girls seem to be wearing yukata. I wonder why Shizune and Misha didn't dress up today. The two women would not look nice in yukata. I briefly think about what types they would wear. Shizune would like, likely go with something traditional. However, Misha's a bit hard to place. 
Misha arrives, panting as she runs to us, trying to keep the food in her arms from falling. Setting everything on the ground, she lets herself drop backward. Ah, that took a while. Come on, you didn't tell me what you wanted, so I just got some rice punch, some sandwiches, and some candy, too. A little bit of everything. That's great. Let's dig in. Misha takes a bite out of a stall, small triangular sandwich. So, Hee-Chan, what do you think of the festival? It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. The stars are nice tonight. It couldn't have been a more perfect day. The sound of people talking below us is like faint music along the chirping of the crickets in the distance. I take a sip from the can of punch and look over at Misha. It looks like she's sleeping comfortably with her back stretched out in a full can of apple juice, half can, half full can of apple juice balanced on her stomach. She then sits with her legs drawn closer, rocking back and forth slowly like an impatient child as she stares up at the sky. The two of them are so cute. I look around and see many students holding hands with their girlfriends or boyfriends. Not too far from us on this roof, there are couples gazing up at the stars or down at the lights of the festival, holding each other's hand. A part of me wants that. Looking at Shizune and Misha, I wonder if I would be, should ask one of them out someday. I wonder if it would be worth the risk. The golden hands moving across the face of the delicate watch on Shizune's wrist catch my eye, and I see that it's getting kind of late, but the festivities are still going strong. Shizune is still holding the st stuffed cat I won by the paw. She notices my looking at it. Offhandedly, she offers it to me. I smile, wanting to ask her what I would do with it, but she wouldn't be able to understand me. I shake my head and try my best to tell her to keep it, hoping she'll understand. As I look out toward the school, I can see before me so many people, all of which are happy and cheerful. Watching them makes me feel content. This really was something. Today was worth it. I still can't shake the feelings of guilt and melancholy from earlier. They keep hanging on to me, and I can't let them go. Shizune signs something to me, and I can't understand her. No matter what I say, she won't be able to hear me. I can't understand you, Shizune. Well, whatever. I wonder if we would both consider ourselves at fault for this. Anyway, I'm sorry for not being able to understand. You know, I'm almost, almost, almost glad that you tried to coerce me into coming here. If I attempted to date you, though, I might have to think more about that side of you. No, actually, I'm glad. Today was nice. You'd be cuter if you smiled more. You have a nice smile. Frustrated, she stands up, arms behind her back, looking authoritative and confident against the backdrop of stars. Suddenly, Shizune throws her arms out toward the open sky, seeming to hold it between her hands. It's as if she's telling me to look at everything in front of me. The school, bathed with the festival's glow and lit up with the colorful yukata, the roof illuminated by fireflies, the sky so vast that it imposes the feeling of awe onto you. What does she want? It slowly dawns on me with time. This beautiful scene before me is proof that there are wonderful, wonderful things, well, there are things wonderful enough that spoiling with a bad mood would be unforgivable. And I can feel the weight of Shizune's personality pressing the point further. Thanks, I guess. I look away, but then Shizune grabs me by the shoulder, her watch brushing, brushing against my cheek. With the left hand, she points up at the sky. With faint pops, fireworks begin to go off in the sky, each one spreading a shower of bright colors that slowly fade into the dark. I can't even recall the last time I saw fireworks at all, much less a display this large. Not to mention it seems like they're being launched from the school. It's almost impossible to believe. The lights in the sky mingle with a seventh, second salver from the town below, and they seem timed to complement each other like two parts of a duet. They continue for maybe fifteen more minutes, and then stop. Shizune realizes her hand is still on my shoulder and withdraws it carefully, looking a little uncomfortable. Regaining her composure, she grins, her hands on her hips and her chest thrust out in front of her. It's in these moments that she seems most like a regular teenage girl, energetic, happy, and carefree. I eat thoughtfully with Shizune, the two of us looking out at the gradually thinning crowds below in silence. She sits leaning forward slightly, her chin resting softly in her hands and a condensed look on her face with just a hint of, hint of wistfulness. All the while, still gently holding on to the stuffed cat's paw, I start feeling tired and I tell her that I see, I'll see her and Misha tomorrow, without even realizing that she can't hear me, and then start walking back to the dorms. I feel warm and alive, even in this chilly night air. The image of Shizune standing forcefully behind the stars themselves, before the stars themselves, denying my self-pity does not leave my mind easily. If, if it only takes a moment for there to be love, I think I may be falling in love with her. Just a little bit.
Text 2. Learning to Read. Now, I, I would continue on from here, but I think I'm going to stop this, technically stop the video at the end of this act, or the end of Act 1, and pretty much sum up what I think of it. And probably make myself look like a total creep. Though I, I suppose I could do that at the end of the, the path, but I'll do it now. Act one, in my opinion, is really nice. Of course, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Obviously, there's five, well, actually six different ways. One ends at the end of Act one, and that's the Kenji path. I can't say why. But there's also, of course, the five different paths with the five different girls, being Emi, Rin, Lily, Shizune, and Hanako. And, like, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Shizune is my favorite character. I say that with a little bit of embarrassment. Because, you know, here it comes. You hear about nerds saying, like, the really desperate ones, like, oh, my first love was an anime character. Now, before you think, oh, oh, that's what he's trying to get at. No. Technically, my first love was freshman year. It was freshman year. It was like a year ago. Actually, I just got out of sophomore year today. Well, yesterday since it's the next day. But yeah, that was technically my first love, even though I, I didn't really know what love is. You know. I want to know what love is, and I want you to show me. That was really off key, I know. But I, I want to know. I want to know what is love. Maybe don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. And she pretty much did. So, yeah, the guy that's with the nose getting sloppy fourths. She can burn in hell for all I care. Now, taking that into account. That doesn't mean that I've just given up on real-life women, because it's not like that at all. But I have basically found a picture of Shizune with her, like, dressed a little bit differently. She's got, like, a scarf, and, you know, obviously she can't talk, so, like, I guess in some fog, she's writing out, like, that she hearts you. And... How do I explain this? Uh, this is where my inner creep comes out. I swear it does. Well, I, to kind of lighten it, I actually love the idea of Shizune's character. Like, if there were a real, ver real world version of Shizune, which of course there isn't, and if there was, that'd be. They'd probably be on the other side of the world, actually living in Japan, would have nothing to do with me, would not want anything to do with me, and anything of the sort. But, from what I've seen of Shizune's character, she's a really good character, even though nobody thinks so, which is kind of odd. But, um, in addition to that, like, I just got out of school, technically yesterday. And then I go and I play this game. Now I've had this game. I've been playing this for like two months, maybe. Maybe. No, actually. I think it was just a month. Yeah, just a month. And the idea of the school in this game is the kind of school I'd like to be at. And the festival really shows that to me. Because it's a really serene place. You know, there's nice people there that are not a bunch of jackasses and whores like my ex was and the guy who's with her now. But there's really nice people there. There's a good diversity of people there. Like, there's people of every different kind. They've all got something wrong with them. But that doesn't make them a worse person for not being wrong with them. Like, Shizune's deaf and she's still my favorite character. Like, you could, you could say that I love Shizune. You, you could say that. I would deny it, did not call myself a freak, but you could say that. Whereas, 
Now, I don't, like, dislike any of the characters because of what their disability is. I dislike them because of what I've seen of their character. Which does not make me a jerk. Like, Emmy is probably my least favorite character. It is not because she's missing her legs to me. It is because I don't like her character in itself. And you'll see what her character is when I do get around to doing that path. Because I'm doing all the paths. But I'm doing the one I enjoy the most first. Then second most. And then after that, I don't know which one I'm going to do. But I'm probably going to end up with Emmy. And then probably end the off DLP with Kenji. Because in a way, it kind of fits. So what do I say now? Canada, Canada was able to go on for like 20 minutes just summing up what he... Well, then again, that was an entire act. No, that, was, that, was, that was an entire path, right? I was just summing up an act. He, he summed up the entire Emmy path, which like, he said was one of his favorite. And it just depends. It's preferences. Like, he doesn't really sh like Hanako's character because of how she's so, so, so shy. Yet when... You compare her to like real life people, she would fit me. Because I talk to like nobody. That's just what I do. It's not it's not because I was in a house fire or anything. A house fire that killed my parents is just I'm not a very open person. Other than this of course. Of course. Like this is where I really get to talk the most. And I have to have bottles and bottles of water to keep my throat going because I'm not used to talking as much. And then you look at Lily. This is kind of going off the tangent. Lily's blind. I don't li dislike her character because of that. I didn't really look too much into her path because I just wanted to get all the paths done, just to say that I had them all done. I will be going more in depth with her. Well, actually, the only path I did fully was Shizune's. And I mean, I first saw this game when. Winslow was doing an LP of it, and Shizune was my favorite from the start. And I wonder why that is. It it might be because my favorite color is blue. That might be it. That might be a subconscious thing or something. Because really, from that point, you don't really know much about, about a character. Or it could be that I was just the most interested in what I could see of Shizune and wanted to experience all of that in itself. So I spent an entire Sunday and did that, and was incredibly depressed the next day. But it changed me. You, like, if you know me in real life, you might not see it now, but it has changed me. I feel different about disabled people. I really do. Like, I, I don't see many disabled people in my everyday life. Usually I just see, like, special ed children. Which would would be disabled, but they're more of the, like the mentally special ed, or they seem that way. Probably sound like a jerk right now, don't I? Um, but yeah, that's usually what I see. I don't really run into like people with burn marks or you know blind people or deaf people. And again, really, you wouldn't really expect to see to see them in a public school system anyway. Probably for like mora morale and whatnot. I don't, I don't know that you know working the school probably never will. Uh, what, what was I getting at? Anyway, um, like you could you could say that I I'm in love with Shizuna. You could say that. It makes me feel like sound and feel like a creep, but you, you could say that. Um, Shizune's path is my favorite path, even though like most of the fans don't like it. Um. I'd, l I'd like to be in a school like Yamaku, because see it seems better than the school I'm in now, or was in, because, like, not everybody's a jerk and a whore. Um, First Love's not an anime character. It was a whore, technically. And... I, I think after this I'm gonna um, go into Act 2. I'm gonna do that, just keep the ball rolling. But, I believe after going on for about, what was it, six, six or ten minutes, I didn't really count. After ranting for about six minutes, 
I think I stopped the part here. And the next one, we will start Act 2, Learning to Read. So until then, take care, I guess stay frosty, and keep on signing. I will see you guys then.